I had a lot of trouble writing this up. Should it be a review? A comparison? A guide? It's all really frustrating. This kind of thing can really drive a man mad. Succeeding the 950 Pro, the next step in Samsung's SSD evolution chain is the Samsung 960 Evo and 960 Pro. Given its M.2 2280 form factor, it's physically short. However, straight from my book of pickup lines, size isn't everything, and it's what's on the inside that counts. But, unlike my own personal life, I actually mean it here. It's got endurance, ensuring that you'll get up to 200 terabytes written out of it, and it's got a repertoire of sizes coming in variants at 250 gigabytes, 500 gigabytes, and a girthy one terabyte, which means plenty of options for you and NVMe. If you didn't catch the bad joke, it uses the PCIe NVMe interface, which will gobble up four of your PCIe lanes. So make sure your motherboard supports that X4 on the M.2. You may need to check that the slot is set to use all four lanes in your BIOS. If your board lacks an M.2 or does not support four lanes in the M.2 port, you can find yourself an M.2 to PCIe adapter, and you should get full speeds at the cost of a PCIe slot. These new SSDs utilize Samsung's VNAND technology, enabling speeds of up to 3200 megabyte per second reads and 1900 megabyte per second writes for the Evo, and 3500 and 2100 respectively for the Pro. I don't know if storage benchmarks are impressive or not, but for the sake of being thorough, get a load of this. By benchmarking software of choice as Crystal Disk Mark 5, we see here that the 960 Evo performs fairly close to what's advertised in terms of sequential reads and writes at 3226 and 1662 megabytes per second respectively, obviously followed by the 950 Pro, doing exactly what it promised it would with reads and writes at 2585 and 1554 megabytes per second. Amazingly enough, both drives individually outperform two Samsung 850 Evo drives in RAID 0, which can go as fast as 1076 megabytes per second for reads and 1038 megabytes per second for writes. A single OCZ Agility 3 drive predictably performs at about half of 850 EVO RAID 0 speeds, albeit with significantly lower random reads, but admirably keeping up with random writes. And finally, in last place, by kind of a lot, we have a 6TB Seagate mechanical hard drive. Sequential reads and writes are 209 and 191 megabytes per second respectively, but random reads and random writes are comically abysmal, both of which aren't even remotely close to double digits. While SSDs don't affect actual gaming performance, they do have an impact on load times. So let's drive right in, dive right in. <laughs> for testing purposes, I've chosen GTA 5 and Dragon Age Inquisition because load times for those games have proven to be notoriously hard drive. The results here I found to be particularly surprising. Times were measured from the moment the game opened until I had control of the character. All SSDs, regardless of RAID, no RAID, SSD steroids or not, we're neck and neck, hovering at around 56 to 62 seconds of wait time for both games. That hard drive though, GTA 5 proved to be about 18% slower in load time, but I'll bet everyone expected the Dragon Age Inquisition, performing over two times worse than the remaining competitors. To be fair though, this is an archive drive, so it's not exactly meant to have games installed anyway. I'm hesitant to talk about prices because they seem to fluctuate wildly on Amazon, but I was able to grab my 500GB EVO model for $250. US dollars. Amazon link is in the description for your convenience. To put that into perspective, I paid $350 a little over a year ago for the 950 Pro with almost the same capacity and lower speeds. Figure that one out. Now, while the numbers are impressive, is this a practical product for you? If you only play games, you'll probably find more benefit from getting a larger capacity SSD instead of a faster one. Installing games is a different story. If you want to throw down extra cash for a faster install, that's on you. I found virtually no difference in load times from SSD to SSD regardless of RAID or no RAID, or otherwise needlessly fast storage. There are a number of 1TB SSDs floating around for nearly the same price as the 500GB 960 EVO, but then again, if you work with some fat footage like 4K video content and you're into editing and production where data is just begging to be eaten alive, then this product may just be right for you. So that's all I have to say about that. Like, dislike, comment, subscribe, share, do that thing you like to do, whatever that may be. Thanks for watching. My name is Steven and I am a little dim. Bye bye. That one was off the cuff. I usually script that last part. This time I just did it off. I'm getting better at this. I hope. I had a lot of tr- Shit. That was fast. You may need to check that the slot is set to use all four lanes on your BIOS. In your BIOS. Damn it. Technically, it's not a BIOS, it's a UEFI, but everybody calls it the BIOS, so whatever. Up to 3200 megabyte per second reads and 1900 megabyte per second writes for the Evo and then th numbers. <laughs> These new SSDs utilize, utilize, utilize up to 3200 megabytes per second reads and 1900 megabyte per second writes for the Evo and 35 and 20.
3,500 and 2,100, not 35. 35 would be bad. You can find yourself a M dot, an M dot, I think I spit, and that distracted me. I don't know if storage ben mar be bench benchmarks. You'll probably find more benefit from getting a larger capacity SSD instead. Instead of a faster one. Instead of a faster one. I should have just went with that. Either one would have worked. I'm hesitant to talk about prices because... <laughs> because gas. Gas doesn't want me talking about prices. I'm not sure if I want that on the internet either. <laughs>